All right, so I'm gonna do my kink at pride take at long last after all of the spice and everything, people get to actually hear my take. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Here we go. No, it's only it hasn't been one month. It's been a couple. It's been like a week and a half. Here's my kink. My kink at pride. Did I say pride at kink? Kink at pride take. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes, kink absolutely belongs at pride. Okay. And here's the reasons why, okay? First of all, the, the fundamental reason why kink belongs at pride is because at one point in history, and in some places to this day, being gay was considered a kink. Okay? Right now, many people, and I mean a lot of people, consider being trans to be a kink, quote unquote. Now, there are all kinds of opinions on kink. There is all kinds of research that's been done. None of that really matters. What matters is that our society attempts to control other people over things that do no harm. They attempt to control and judge people for who they love, for how they love, and for what they do between consenting adults. And that is fucked. And that is very, very bad. And it has resulted in a lot of death. And I mean that. It has resulted in a lot of death. Okay? And when I say that it's resulted in a lot of death, I mean that very seriously. Okay? Here. I didn't do this before, but I'm going to do it now. Here you go. See? That was a bad one. That was a bad pop. I almost dropped my my clove. The stigmatization of queer people has led to lynchings again and again throughout American history. It has led to imprisonment. It has led to disempowerment, poverty, disgusting levels of poverty. It has led to horrific emotional abuse. It has led to silencing, and it still does to this day. In fact, just two days ago, on May 24th, 2021, the Republican-controlled Pennsylvania legislature upheld keeping the state law categorizing homosexuality as obscene. Now, in a legal, in a legal sense, obscene is something that is not fit for for uh, um, any sort of public display. The Republicans in PA, and in the state of PA, it is illegal to be gay in public. Now, as for enforcement, I don't think it's enforced at all. But that doesn't matter. Not necessarily. Because enforcement can change at a moment's notice. The law is supposed to guide enforcement. And if the law says... That technically you can arrest people for being gay, for holding hands with their boyfriend in public or their girlfriend in public or their them friend in public. That's pretty bad. There are sodomy laws still on the books in many states. Some of them are enforced in order to prevent gay people from expressing themselves in public. Yes. Yes, I know. People are surprised by this, but it's true. Okay? And I restate once again that for many people, even to this day, and I know we all live in, you know, we tend to engage in, in progressive communities for the most part, all of you who are here. Uh, there are, um, you might be surprised by the fact that there are a lot of people who to this day do believe that uh, that being gay is a kink, but they won't say it like that. See, because we use the word kink. We say the words kink. Progressives know what that is. But see, what, what conservatives will say is that it's a lifestyle choice. That being gay is a sexual, a purely sexual decision. Right? That no one should have to engage in. Okay?
Now, I told this yesterday on my debate with Vosh, but I'm going to say it again here because it's rather important to me. And some of you have heard this before. Some of you won't. But there's a lot of new people here today, so I'm going to retell a story, okay? I really am. And uh, by the way, um, yeah. So let me tell you, okay? When kink and fetish are different words, yes, but people use them inter in interchangeably, okay? So we need to be careful because people use them interchangeably. And we have to teach people that there are differences, okay? And we're getting there. Behind me on my shelf, right over there, right where I'm pointing, nope, right here, this one. Not the book, the paper. I did this the other day and it's, same, it's a problem with the angle of the camera. Fuck me, you can't even see it. It's off screen, I didn't even realize it. Uh, it's off cam. Ah, shit. Fuck. Wrong way! God damn it. This is a mess. There you go. Right here. That right there is one of my cursed artifacts. There we go. It's a little better. Okay. <clears throat> that is one of my cursed artifacts. That is a letter from my stepdad. My late stepdad. He's no longer alive. And in that letter, my dad, my stepdad promises that if I ever show up with my freak flag flying, that's the words that he used to describe what, what you see me now. You see me now just in normal clothing. This is what my stepdad would have described as my freak flag. Because in his mind, being trans was a purely sexual act. Being a freak, being a deviant, engaging in a fetish. And he threatened to kill me with a shotgun if I, ever sh if I ever came to my house and the justification was that I was bringing a kink, a fetish, to his children's place where his children lived, my siblings who I loved dearly and took care of for most of my life. This is the justification that countless people, Jews, to justify kicking their children out, okay? I'm serious. I'm not kidding you, okay? This is this is what they say. I'm not going to let this happen in my house because the implication, if you listen in and listen to the reasoning, this is what we're trying to do here, is get to the bottom of things, because the justification is I don't need to accept my child engaging in something and when I say child, I don't mean literal child. I mean your your offspring. I don't need to um, I don't need to uh, enable my offspring to engage in something that I think they have a choice in, such as being gay or being trans, because fundamentally these people see being trans and being gay as lifestyle decisions, as fetishes. They don't use those words, okay? But we have to be smarter than to listen to just the words they say. We have to come to understand the, the, the reasons, the way that they build their ideas. So. <clears throat> that is the justification that many, many people still existing in America. In fact, I would argue that a large amount of Trump supporters hold that position. And what this, what this illustrates is that there is a very, very broad area of what people consider sexual or not, of what people consider fetish or not, of what people consider kink or not. Okay? I'm serious. And as a result, I believe that we should use much better reasoning. Instead of relying on 
whatever concern trolling bullshit that Christians will throw out, because keep in mind that Christians are Christians and other hardcore right wing religious groups are responsible for banning all kinds of art for, for ruining the lives of, of gay people all over the country. Not all Christians, mind you, but the religious right, which is most Christians in this country. And as a result, they will say anything. They will say gay people are. They will say et cetera, et cetera. Instead, we need to determine if there is harm being done. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to lay this out so it's a very clear argument. First of all, anti-gay people see being gay as a fetish. That is not Something being a fetish is not a good reason to justify it not being allowed in public. Understand? That's the logic. Because Christians can say anything is a fetish. They can say they're uncomfortable with gay people existing. They can be, say they're uncomfortable. Remember that video in, that I watched on my stream in my uh, spiritual deconstruction of my, of my old pastor doing the big rant about masculinity and how men dis expressing their feelings disgusts him wow that's pretty bad it's pretty bad and there's a lot of people who believe like that because there are some people who see that men who have a lisp or men who talk lightly or men who aren't strong are gay and they that that, that is a sign of degeneracy So it is not good reasoning to say that if something is considered a kink by some group of people, that therefore it should be outlawed in public. Does that make sense? Instead, what we should do is we should try and make arguments based on whether there is harm. And this leads to my second point which is that I don't think that people are harmed by simply witnessing the existence or even the performance of most, if not all, kink. Now, there are, of course, some exceptions. There are, of course, extreme examples. We, have our, we already have restrictions against things like, um, I don't know, a circle of people bukkakeing on the face of, uh, of, of, of their partner in public. Okay? Of course, we know this. There are obviously limits to this. Obviously. But I don't think that it's responsible to make arguments that just because some people consider something too sexual, that that means that it can't, that it should never be allowed to see the light of day. Because at the end of the day, I don't think there is harm done. And harm has to be established if we're going to ban something from public or if we are going to argue that it should not be presented in public. What's a good way to say it's not what you see it's bad, but your perception of it? Yeah. Well, I'll address that in a second, Melodic. I'll address that in just a second. Hold on a second. Okay, so there we go. So it is hard for us to determine, with some exceptions, what is and what isn't appropriate, okay? And let me give you some examples of this, okay? For example, let me give you a, a, a very, I'm going to use extreme examples here. So this is a warning that I'm using extreme examples to illustrate a point, okay? So please refrain from from mischaracterizing me while I am explicitly saying that I am using this as an example of a point, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> wedding rings, okay? Wedding rings are a totally, a completely societally acceptable expression of dominance and submission. Okay? And you might not believe me on that, but I want you to think about it for a second. 
Think about it for a second. We have a we have different rings for the man and the woman in a relationship. One is a simple gold band, and the other is usually a bedazzled diamond ring. Why is that? Well, that is because the man is the strong band that keeps things together, and the woman is the beautiful diamond that must be protected. You get passed off to your husband by your father, correct? And rings are literally supposed to show mutual ownership. And if you follow the Christian tradition, like I used to, growing up in an extremist cult, you will be taught, and many of you may have encountered this in your life, even not a part of an, of an extremist cult. Many Christians are familiar with this, with the idea of women, the, and this is a verse, women, submit to your husbands. That is a Bible verse that is, that is incorporated into standard wedding vows. But rings are all over the place. Ownership wedding rings are all over the place. And we know that people get horny for that shit. Both people wear rings. Yeah, so what? So what? Nuts, how does that change anything? Would this point still be salient if both people had identical rings? Of course it would. Because you can look at what those things actually mean. What they're broadcasting to the world. And I don't think that there is much difference between, on a, on a pure level, between a wedding ring and a collar. Except for societal stigma. And I recognize that societal stigma is important to consider. However, it is not a good justification. Societal stigma is not a good justification for banning something from public. And in fact, people wear collars or collar or things that approach collars all the time. It is just an aesthetic difference. There is no moral difference between those things. I disagree with you on that. Jade Monkey. Remember that a collar and leash also indicates that we belong to each other. Who cares? Nobody cares about... Christians are super hierarchical. We know nobody would come into my chat and argue that we don't have a problem in our country with men basically taking ownership over women. It is literally... we No, I would certainly hope that nobody would be so absurd as to come into my chat and tell me that feminism was completely wrong. That's silly. And no, not to a Mormon. That's your perspective, Jade Monkey. I grew up knowing that wedding rings were an explicit promise of submission. And I mean this. I know that some of you don't think that this is true, but it is. In Christian families, this is taught all the time. You will, when, when families conflict, and I know because I had to go to family counts, Christian family counseling, when my parents had conflicts, and I had to listen to the pastor say, to my mom, you need to sub you need to submit to your husband under God. Yes, I am gay fesh. Oh, you know I'm going to gay fesh. It is a direct sign of religious submission. And there really isn't much of a difference between that and a collar and a leash. Ada Starta says, I can confirm I was taught the same things. Many people were. Okay. And let's talk about another example, okay? Okay? Okay. Let's talk about the spicy one. And I'm going to use another extreme example for the purpose of illustrating my point, okay? So I'd appreciate it. Um, is it okay to want to trad wife? Of course it is. Of course it's okay to want that. Here's another extreme example. A puppy mask, okay? A leather puppy mask. Everybody's going to freak out about it. Here we go. 
Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Ready, everybody? I'm about to blow your fucking minds. Watch this. Close your eyes, everyone. I hope that you are ready for what I've done. I'm very sorry for all of you. I'm very, very sorry that I have subjected you all and, and violated you all so violently. Yeah, I know. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a mask. And for all you know, none of you in chat can tell me whether or not this is a kink or whether this is to be funny because it's just a mask. It's just a motherfucking fish mask. And I happen to know that there are a lot of people, there are a fuckload of furries out there who really like this type of mask, who really like being a fish. Okay? Mama mackerel. Well, you can kind of, gay fish. You can a little bit. But you don't know for sure. And nobody can. Nobody reasonably can. So, so it can't really, you know, we can't really call that a, uh, a totally fair argument, right? I know you didn't, Snips, but listen how we've come, okay? Listen how far we've come. So some of you, thank you, Artificial Feathers, appreciate that. So, um, <clears throat> so some of you might not have a visceral reaction to me putting on a fish mask, but some of you would probably have a visceral reaction if I was to put on a dog mask. But that is because of your associations. Not because the mask is doing any harm to you. The mask isn't hurting you at all. In fact, somebody wearing the mask is probably just minding their own business. Sure. Yeah, sure, I'm the radical left. I can, I can bring that up. Here you go. Here we go. Here, I'll give you an example. Here you are. There you go. This is what we're talking about right now. Fish aren't as owned and domesticated as a dog. They're worse. Dude, fish have it way worse than, than dogs. Fish have it way worse than dogs. So there you go. There's your, there's your mask. Now, some people might look at this and go, wow, that's kind of horny. Some people might uh, look at that and go, oh, that's kind of cool. You want to see another example of a mask that some people might do that with? I'm going to show you another one. Ready? Ready? I'm going to show I'm going to blow your minds because you're about to you're about to realize why this argument is stupid and why I have problems with it. Okay? Are you ready? Are you fucking ready? Here we go. Here it comes. Wait, hold on a second. That's not the right one. Hold on. Give me a second. Here we go. Uh-oh. Which one of these is kink? And which one of these is not kink? Which one of these is, a so is okay to be in public and will do harm to children? And which one of these is not okay to be in public? Or is... Sorry. Which one of these is not okay to do in public and will hurt and will harm children? Which one would not? You would confer to the wisdom of the masses on this one? Well, then you're a fool. So, yeah.
those masks are almost identical. Oh yeah, there's even bat bat nipples. Yeah, remember the bat nipples? Oh shit, look at that. Oh, are we gonna are we gonna go there? Fucking fucking the most famous This was a movie aimed at children. Oh my god. Batman has he literally they even took the time to detail his nipples. Damn. Uh oh, we're getting into some problematic uh, territory. So do you see what I'm illustrating here? Do you see what I've brought up here? Do you understand what I'm getting at? Does that make sense? So I don't think that there's a very good argument to be made that wearing a mask alone is worthy, even a mask that might be frequently associated with... Um, a mask that might be frequently associated with sexual acts is necessarily sexual or harmful in and of itself. And guess what? That made you very uncomfortable? Oh, I'm sorry. If you're made uncomfortable by it, that is your responsibility. Yeah? And there are obviously limitations to that. I don't have a puppy mask. Excuse me. With all due respect. With all due respect. <clears throat> do I seem like the type who would be a puppy? Give me a break. My God. You people. Pride was dis... Yes. Thank you, Pirate Finn. That is what I was about to say. Pride was designed to help fight through nonsensical to t societally taught discomfort with things that are not harmful. That are not harmful. And I don't think that there is evidence for people to claim that simply seeing a mask, even one that you might be slightly uncomfortable with, is... Harmful. Okay, so we're going to go on to something else. Okay, I'm going to illustrate you another example of this that I think is interesting. Okay, how many of you, okay, people in my audience, have you ever been to a game store when you were under 18 and seen video game covers? Has everyone? I think everybody has been. Everybody here. I don't think anybody here. Well, there might be some people here who weren't young enough. Okay? Watch this. I, I know you all are going to know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about here in just about two seconds. Okay? Watch this. Here we go. Leisure Suit Larry. Wet Dreams Don't Dry. Now this one's the PS4 one. But there were other covers that I could show you. As you can see, there's quite a lot of various things in this game. And many of you were minors when you first saw Leisure Suit Larry. Or yeah, why not, get, why not Grand Theft Auto? Remember this one, everybody? Oh, anybody remember this one? Uh-oh. Damn, they even put a tattoo. They even put a fucking tattoo. And no one, no one would argue that these things existing are harmful to children, despite the fact that these are very sexual. I could show you a hundred thousand examples of things that are literally advertised at children. Nothing is inherently anything 
in context of a fetish festival, dog, mask, and leash are sexual. Yeah, well, good thing that's a fetish sexual. That's a fetish festival, and we're talking about pride. Yes, Jack Thompson did argue that, and the world that Jack Thompson would push for is one that we can all agree would be fucking miserable. Of course there was a parental scare over GTA, but guess what? Those parents were wrong. They were wrong. They were fucking wrong. Those parents were fucking wrong. There was, there's no harm of a game existing in a store and a child seeing that game, even if it is referencing sexual content. Uh, the ESR, if you think the ESRB is a counter to this, you're just, that's completely silly. The ESRB ratings are incoherent. ESRB ratings are incoherent. Though that is not an, an argument. That is a legal argument when we're talking about a moral argument. Let's not... I could go into that, but that's silly. I'm going to give you another quick example. And I'm going to give credit here to Silent for putting this argument together for me. Okay? So some of you are going to go, well, <clears throat> the context is super, super important. And I agree with you. Context is very, very important. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the content, that even in context, that it would be harmful. And let me show you an example of this, right? Real quick, I'm going to do a, a I'm going to do a vote in chat. We're going to do a quick poll. Ready? Just answer honestly. Just answer fucking honestly. Is killing generally bad and inappropriate to children? Yes. And I think we could also follow from this that warfare is likely traumatizing to children. Okay? However, let me show you this. Here we have some military men showing off their wartime achievements. These are these may be awards for killing people. These may be awards for uh, surviving being killed. And here they are dressed in their uniforms. And in fact, we could go even further and we could point out people in service uniforms, right? These uniforms or something like it. Here we go. Here's one. Here we go. Here's an example. Here's some dudes who are in the uniforms that they would kill people in. These are the uniforms that they would actually kill people in. This is the uniform that you wear when you are going to, mur to kill people. And yet, we recognize that children simply seeing the uniform that you would kill people in doesn't harm them. Sorry, survive being shot. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Ab Abdel Karim Uzin. Thank you so very much. It's very generous of you. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Okay. And I would attest that even though a military uniform is a reference to acts of killing in war that we do not consider the act of seeing the uniform harmful to children who we can agree would be traumatized by witnessing acts of war. Likewise, follow my logic here. You already know what I'm going to say, don't you? You all know what I'm going to say, right? 
Thank you, Silent, for putting together this example with me last night. But you know what I'm going to say. Somebody wearing their kink outfit, which references a potentially inappropriate, obviously inappropriate act, is not the same thing as witnessing the act, is it? It's not the same thing, is it? You all saw it coming. And the reason why you saw it coming is because I have a good argument. An outfit worn at pride, even one that you might personally find distasteful, is not in and of itself witnessing an act that could be harmful. In fact, it is simply referencing that these things exist and aren't necessarily harmful when done in the correct context. Just like there are correct con contexts in which being a warrior, being a brave warrior, there are many contexts in which being a brave warrior and even killing could be good. We acknowledge that children should not be subjected to killing, to war. Hold on. Just like there are certain contexts in which these uniforms would be a good thing. For example, like I'm pretty sure this guy is wearing a uniform that he would go to kill Nazis with. But this is a reference. It is saying, yes, these things exist, but you are not having to see it firsthand. Even though these are literally the outfits that you would kill people in. And likewise... This, though this is the outfit that you would do a child inappropriate act in, the outfit itself is not the harmful thing in itself. Even though, if you wanted to, you could look at this and you could imagine, just like you could with these, just like you can look at these soldiers and you can imagine this guy picking up a gun and shooting a bunch of people. Same way that you can imagine this guy picking up a gun and shooting a bunch of people. You can probably imagine this guy. This guy's mustache. You know what that mustache is used for. You know what that mustache is used for. You know what that, you know what those lips are used for. You know what this is used for. But seeing it is not the same thing as being subjected to it. And there's another part of my argument that I want to bring up. Which is as follows. <clears throat> Ah, uh, yes. This is the real one that's going to seal the deal. Are you ready? Are you fucking ready for it? This is going to seal the entire deal. Do you want to know what the difference is between the soldier, the wedding ring, and the leash collar and dog mask? Do you know what the difference is? Homophobia. And specifically, a stigmatize a society-wide stigmatization of AMAB sexuality. Of AMAB sexuality. No one bats an eye when I if I bring up, in fact, I could do it right now. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. Watch this. I'm gonna do it right now. Hold on a second. Give me a second. In fact, I'm going to do it live. Ready? Oh, whoops. That was easy. That was super, super easy. Damn. 
already found some really fucking horny shit that's openly accessible to children. <sighs> Want to find some other examples? Let's see. Can I find a few? Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that, everybody. Oh, damn. See, Heaton? I played this game on stream. Yeah, uh-oh. And do you want to know what the difference is between that blood-soaked, blood-soaked, busty, highly sexualized woman and the leather daddies at kink is? One of them tailors to the ta to acceptable tastes and one of them tailors to unacceptable tastes. That's what it is. That's the difference. And in our society, AMAB sexuality, I agree with you, but your argument is like saying a creepy flasher isn't doing anything wrong if they go around naked and wiggle their wang around at people. That removing the shock factor makes it better. Hey, 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 Prime, real quick. Do you think there might be a difference between a fully clothed, but perhaps scantily clothed individual and somebody shoving their cock in someone else's face is? Do you not think... Do you think do you not think that's a little bit of a bad bad faith example? Are are you for real right now? I don't care what argument anybody else made. I'm talking to my chat right now. Yes, there are bromo, and guess what? Okay, what are you confused about? Ask if you have a if you have a if you have a genuine question, ask. But maybe you should consider whether it's a good faith question or not, because I don't think that's a fair comparison at all. First of all, proximity to somebody's genitals is very different. A passive display of a public event that you can choose to leave is very different than somebody running up to you and forcing you to see their naked body. And if you don't think so, you've got to be kidding me. You, you actually, are you, are you, like, can I, do I have to explain it to that detail? Why an event that you can choose to leave if you want to is different than somebody intentionally running up to you and forcing you to, to see their body? You don't see any difference with that. Well, interestingly, Dank Lord... The funny thing is, we have different standards for flashing as a crime than we do for rape. Because those are different acts. We can acknowledge, and in fact, there are many states in which public nudity is not punished. In fact, in Germany, there are countries in which public nudity is not punished. Couldn't Nazis say the same about Nazi paraphernalia? Yes, they could. And in fact, here in America, we protect a certain amount of that. However, there is these are not the same things even in the close in the, in the closest. Nazi paraphernalia is an item, and by the way, Nazis do do this all the time, just so you know. I recognize that flashing is not public nudity. And do you want to know why it's not public nudity? Because someone is intentionally forcing you to see something. Going out of their way to force you to see something that you don't want to see. That is not the same thing as pride. That is not the same thing as, 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 a, as a kink float that you can walk the other direction of. Are you, are you people like this is actually this is part of the reason why this is so maddening. Why this discourse is so maddening. How do you, this is a bad faith argument. This is a fucking bad faith argument. The difference is that one is seen, one 
passive public display of sexual references is seen as acceptable and one is not. And if you ask the follow-up question to that, the natural follow-up question to that is why? And if it's not because it's harm, which we've established that it's not, you all you all acknowledged just seeing something like a soldier's uniform does not constitute harm. Then what's what's the difference? And the difference is that in our society, our society hates gay people. Specifically, our society hates gay men. And people who are perceived as gay men, which includes trans people. You ever notice, real quick, before you all jump in, before you all jump in with your hot takes, y'all notice how the bathroom, the bathroom scare, which is gripping this nation and many others, which is leading to laws that are banning trans people from public bathrooms, which are private, nobody pisses with the, with the stall door open, is targeted at trans women, AMAB people, people who are seen by bad actors as men. Little interesting, isn't it? Little weird. And it's very interesting to me that there are a lot of people who fixate on pedophilia only when it pertains to gay men referencing in any way their sexuality. And let me tell you something else. It isn't just gay men, by the way. If you're straight, real quick question. This is just a, a quick audience poll, okay? Have you ever kissed your girlfriend? This is for cishet people only. Cishet people only. Have you ever kissed your girlfriend in public? I know you have. If you have one, a girlfriend. Some of you might be virgins or whatever or not had girlfriends, okay? That's fine. No, no, no shame, okay? That is a... Not only, I would argue that is a intimate and sexual act. And I would also be willing to guess. We have too many gay people in, in, in tweet. I would also be willing to get to guess that you probably have nobody has ever said anything to you about it. Maybe your parents are like, hey, watch the PDA. Maybe your teacher's like, hey, watch the PDA. But I... I once was honked at and had a fist shaked at me by someone who saw me give a quick kiss to my girlfriend. We all know why that happened. We all know why that happens to me and not to the thousands of other people who smooch or even fucking make out in public all the time. It's because of homophobia. It's because, there, not because there's any harm to children, it never has to do with the harm to the children. It has to do with trying to repress an entire group of people who are demonized. Who are fucking demonized. And that demonization, as to circle all the way back to the beginning, leads to harm. I had a car full of people honk and yell at me because I kissed my boyfriend. Gay trans men. It's a very common occurrence, believe it or not. I've had it happen multiple times. I have gotten honked at. I've gotten shouted at for holding hands with my partner. In public. I have gotten accosted by wearing for wearing rainbow shit in public. So I think I've made a pretty good argument here, have I not? For why the anti-kink at pride argument is 
hot garbage. I'm sorry, but shit is not an appropriate public attire. I would agree. Shit smells and is very unsanitary. Please do not coat yourself in shit and go in public. That would be a very... I, I cannot... Rec I would highly recommend not doing that. DM, thanks for this take. This discourse had me feeling lots of shame I hadn't felt as a queer mask NB in a while, and seeing you come out against the stupidity is super uplifting. They were. Oh, Lucid Days. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Lucid Days says, uh, Vimp here, aka Vosh, Vosh Imp, somebody who watches both me and Vosh. I thought you did great in your conversation with Vosh. I think chat was just drama frogging. I agree. Uh, there was a lot of drama frogs there. Like I said, every single major person in this space was watching that stream or restreaming that stream. Bromo says, honestly, isn't this whole thing kind of a non-issue because based on which pride parade you're going to, it's already been decided whether or not it'll be kink-free and family-friendly or if they'll have after-hours things. Should people already know whether or not they can take their kids to pride? Yes, but they don't care. And the reason they don't care is one of two reasons, okay? The reason they don't care is either one, they don't like gay people and they are acting in bad faith, or two, they're not fully informed on the issue. Yeah, we had a fine conversation. I was, uh, we were both very, very angry and we were both a little heated at the beginning, but it was fine. Okay. And keep in mind that there is absolutely nothing wrong with having certain events that are meant to be totally palatable. I don't even think it's, a, I think it's fine to even have the main event be, um, be, be, uh, kid friendly or whatever. But the idea that anyone would take the position that kink does not belong at pride is, is, in my opinion, woefully incorrect or has a totally different moral system than me that I don't agree with. Because remember, it is only a matter of time before all kinds of sexuality or sexual expression, mundane or otherwise, could be demonized once again, like they were in the 90s, like they were in the early 2000s, like they are right now. And keep in mind that in the past, kink communities have literally been a safe place for queer people who had no other place to go. That doesn't mean that's the way it should be, but they have. And, and ignoring that history is ridiculous, especially when it's predicated on a flawed argument. Especially when it's based on such a flawed argument. And I've, I've seen nothing but flawed arguments going around on this. Nothing but flawed arguments. So there you go. C can you go over what your opinion of what the line would be? I think it would round out the topic. Yes. Um, forceful or aggressive non-consensual displays. I'll talk, I'll, I'll pop over to Twitch chat in a minute here. Let's see. I'll pop over to Twitch chat in a second. Lady Kelgana says, my dad once told me a story that in the early 90s, someone left a BDSM magazine on his porch and he was so scared that someone would think that he's into that, that he took it three blocks away to trash it. Yes. Homophobia is horrible in america it is horrible okay and it's not gone not even close so 
So yes, kink belongs at pride. Kink is not inherently harmful. Whether or not it's inherently sexual or not does not matter because the simple act of seeing something that references something that could be harmful in another context is not the same thing as being exposed to that. And of course, there are limitations mostly to do with how people are able to control their consent. If you are at a if you go out of your way to go to an event which you can walk away from with no forcefulness whatsoever, your consent is not being violated. It is not being reasonably violated. That is absurd. That is absurd. We would never claim this for anything else. We would never claim that someone was victimized by witnessing a busty woman on the cover of GTA. And likewise, no one has been victimized by seeing uh, people on leashes at, at Pride. No one. No one is harmed. Unless you have some sort of very specific trigger and then don't go to Pride. You can leave Pride. Oh, yeah, Eli Caval. Dude, yeah, right on the same point. Eli Caval brings up a great point. You want to compare this to wrestling? Du dudes in literal, literal fucking underwear grinding up each against each other, all covered in blood and sweat. Come on. Come on. And I want to put a I want to put another pointer on it that the flashing argument is fucking not sensical. It is a flawed argument because in the case of flashing, you someone is going out of their way to infringe on your consent. This is not the case with any public festival. Oh, and if you want to address this even further, hold on a second. I can back this up even further. I'm going to go one further, okay? I'm going to make this argument even more rock solid. Are you are you all ready? You're not ready. You're not fucking ready for how rock solid I'm about to make this argument. Okay? If a woman's No, we'll do we'll use a man. Let me let me let me set up an example. If a guy is walking down the street, and a prankster runs over and pulls his pants down in front of children and his massive cock flops out. Did he commit violation of those children? Because somebody pulled his pants down. So you think I'm the radical left. You might just be an idiot. Did the kid, did the guy who got his pants pulled down in front of children because those children saw his dick against their will, did he commit, did he do, did he violate them? The, the answer is obviously no. And I would ask you, what logic do we determine no? Because he didn't, because it wasn't, it wasn't, not only was it not intentional, it was not forceful. This person was not forcing their thing, their penis, into anybody's face. That is the difference between a person being on a leash in public at an event that you can walk away from and a flasher. I would love to find anyone. I would lo I challenge anyone. And this is a this is a challenge because we're here. I've done the take. Find the flaw in my argument. If anyone finds a flaw in my argument, I would love to hear it. But I don't think there is. I think that this is a rock-solid argument. Presuming that you're not a, like, a Christian moralist who believes that there are commandments from God. <sighs> so now I'm going to give um, 
now I'm going to give uh, a moment for people to uh, to try and tear this apart. Hello? Hello, I'm the radical left. Yes, it Pro is I. Okay, I got your pronouns on here already. Yeah, I, I made sure to keep them in the Discord. Good job. It helps a lot. Of course it does. It makes things very clear and very easy. All right, what is your contention? Um, I don't even know if it's contention to say, oh. but uh, I, th I think that in the main Pride Parade event that okay. most people attend to, the pride thing probably should not be allowed. They the can have their thing? other stuff elsewhere. Or was that a, was that a Freudian kink. slip? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> their kink thing. Okay. I guess. Well, they can have their um, stuff elsewhere. Why? Why? They have many. Oh. Well, simply put, I just think many people should be comfortable at pride. Okay. And I think in the uh, as we currently stand, more people are com are comfortable with the LGBTQ community. So. Maybe. Like, oh yeah, you think so? Well, better than maybe like when I guess the pride events first started. Oh okay. So Slightly we should just we should even. just so that what is right and wrong should be just determined by a random a random sort of period of time that is passed. Because I mean, I was alive. I was alive for two dec. No, I, I mean all three decades of my life have included one form of discrimination against me. That would that I would not characterize as society being particularly friend, friendly to my existence. Again, I talked about my letter that was sent to me by my father, and my my father is not a uh, is not was not an uncommon American. Let's put it that way. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, I don't do I don't understand why. Are, and by the way, just so you know, that, just so you know, most pride events do not have kink displays as a part like yeah. as the main float. But yeah, even if they yeah, did, I, I don't think I would have a problem with it at all. Um. Fine, fair enough. The the thing is, do do other people think that that is okay? What is okay? Because I think there are, with like I guess a kink float in the main okay. pride parade. What's what's wrong with that? What would wrong What would be wrong with a kink float at, at the main pride parade? How how many people are comfortable with that? How many Especially people are comfortable the, with gay people? Do you you do realize that pride was literally the reason why it's called pride? is because it was supposed to be a defiant display of being proud of something that society says you're not supposed to be proud of. It was calling society's bluff. It was saying, you say we're harmful, but we're not harmful. Look. And Do you likewise, think that's the case nowadays? Yeah, absolutely it is. I mean, I think, I think, corporate... I think that, I, okay, real quick question. Do you spend most of your time in progressive circles? I'd like to think so, yeah. Okay, there's your answer. You think it's okay because of your bubble. You exist in a bubble where nobody ever says anything bad about gay people. But not all of us exist in those bubbles. In fact, um, a lot of Americans do not exist in those bubbles. And to those people, they know that there are entire swaths of their, of their fellow people who think they are harmful just for being gay, just for being trans. And for trans people, it's even worse. Right now, there's a lot of people in this country who think that you are forcing them you are you are forcing them to engage in something that they don't they don't they're not comfortable with and they're wrong about that they're wrong about that there's no harm being done by someone being trans somebody being openly trans even if they feel like there is you have to quantify that we have to have reasons for why we would ban things from public we have to have reasons why we would force someone to not appear in public i mean yeah that's that's fair enough uh, yeah it, it is very interesting to hear because I still have the idea that, especially nowadays, more and more people are starting to become comfortable with the LGBTQ community as a whole. Um, it, yeah, but it's still, we're wrong? not even close to be there. And even if we get there, I don't think that it would change the, the core historical purpose of pride. And there are many purposes. There are many purposes for pride, by the way. But one of one of them absolutely is um, to be. I mean, literally, it's in the name. It's why it's called pride. It's because you were it because for a very long time, being gay is something that our society told you you were supposed to be ashamed of because it was a a in their minds a disgusting and degenerate act, and sinful act, and the idea of pride was no, it is not a sinful act. It is not a harmful act. I am proud of who I am. 
That's still here today. That will still be the case, even if society isn't saying those things. It's still okay to celebrate those things. Okay. I, I think we have a, a bit of a different definition on what pride should be, hmm. I guess, right now. You're I saying guess. that it should be slightly more rebellious, like the past? No, I'm saying it can be whatever. Or, it, I, I'm saying it, 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 that is part of its past, and in many cases, that is its place. There, like, pride is not a monolith. There are, there are all kinds of different pride events. Some of them are, you know, very, 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 very public friendly. Other ones are not. And it's okay for there to be different ones. And you can choose to go to them because they're an event that's scheduled. You're not forced to go to any pride event. No one is forced to see a pride event. I think it would be better if more people felt comfortable attending, but... Oh, that's good for you. But you know that there would be other people who are not comfortable, who would be less comfortable attending. And there are many people who are currently um, uncomfortable with the idea that there is even a uh, a pride event in their town, which is absurd. So Ab Absolutely. Sure, if you prefer, if you prefer, if you prefer, like, uh, you know, pride brought to you by Coke, go to a pride brought to you by Coke event. You could do this. You're an adult, right? I mean, I assume. Um, do you not remember the last discussion? Uh, no, I don't. Sorry, are you a okay? kid? Okay, well, <laughs> 17. Okay. I'm about to okay, be. Okay, okay, all right. You're a kid. So, yeah, well, then go to and... go to the Coke, go to the Coke uh, brought to you by Coke Pride if you want to. You can choose that. What or about you can for ask the people or you that... can ask your parents to take you to that one instead. What about for the people that don't have that kind of event in their general vicinity where they can oh, actually I mean, easily go there um i don't know what to tell you there's there's people who don't have a pride event in their town at all maybe you should go make that event you can do that you could be the one who does it or you could ask somebody to do it i mean i like to instead, learn now but, but instead what you're doing, be... but, but see but instead and I, i'm not mad at you for this i'm not going to come down on you super hard for this but what you're doing instead is you're basically saying i don't like the way you're doing it i don't really have a very good reason for it but you shouldn't do it that way and you should do it the way i'm doing it because I think this is better. Well, then do it that way. You should do it. Let's hope one day I can afford to. <laughs> I hope so, too. And I mean, the thing is, the good news is that there are all kinds of different events. There are all kinds of different uh, philosophies and approaches on display at Pride. Yeah, even in, in the same areas, different events, different oh, yeah, days, all different the time. times. Exactly. It's, it's all over the place. That's how festivals are, you know? Yeah. Same thing. It's just like a fair or a carnival. There might be some that you like. There might not be. There might be ones that you don't like. And but the idea that like kink being at Pride somehow prohibits like or damages children or makes them inaccessible to children is silly. It's not. It, it, that's not true. It, it doesn't. And in fact, yeah. those people, those people who are being who you're who are essentially being judged because they look or they dress in a way that makes you slightly uncomfortable you might be missing very valuable perspectives from those people and from the message that they're trying to put out because of your societally ingrained discomfort, which again, that's part, part one of the historical purposes of pride was to challenge people to say, hey, you have a visceral reaction to men being together. You shouldn't. We're just people and we just love each other. So I guess in that argument, you would say, People ha are uncomfortable with, I guess, puppy play, sure. and they shouldn't be. Is that? I mean, I mean, you can be uncomfortable with with engaging in puppy play yourself, sure, and don't do it. Don't do puppy play. No if one's I making won't. you do it. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's making you do it. No one is ever making you do it. There's not a single like no. It, it just it's, nobody's making you do that. Well, what wait, I didn't what, say that people are forcing people to be pup uh, in puppy play. I'm okay. just saying. That, so you think that, that you should be able? You think that you should be able to exist in a world where puppy play doesn't exist? <laughs> no, that would actually okay, then. be silly. Just so you see where that you see that that is silly, then. But that's functionally the argument you're making. You're saying I don't like this thing, therefore it has no right to exist anywhere. I I was referencing what you said, like being gay. Should, you, people think being gay sh is weird. Okay. And they shouldn't be. Yeah, they shouldn't. And guess what? They shouldn't. You shouldn't mistreat people just because they're into something that doesn't hurt anybody. So yeah, I think that if like if you don't personally like it, that's great. But I would hope that you wouldn't like advocate for people who like puppy play or or whatever to be like treated like subhumans. That seems that sounds like a pretty shitty way of going about things. I know that. I know that's not what you're saying. But <laughs> come on. Very nice straw man you got there. That's I'm not joking. a straw man. I just said that's I'm not joking. what I'm saying. But the, but the logical conclusions, you know? Yeah, yeah. I go to saying. Yeah. 
Uh, we shouldn't stigmatize people for like random arbitrary things like that. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think I have much else to say. All right. To be fair. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Well, I'm the radical left. Thank you very much for uh, for coming on and, and talking. I think this was a great conversation. And uh, I hope that I hope that I made myself clearer to you. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely did. Hell yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, very brave of you to come up in front of all these people and uh, really happy to have a conversation with you. I'm always among the chatters, okay? I'm, I'm, I know you are. I'm... I see you there. Oh, you muted yourself. I think that's, oh, yeah, I accidentally hit the Sorry. button. Uh, yeah, I guess see ya. All right, see you later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye for now. All right, let's get the next person in. Next one in. So far, so good. Hello, Demon Mama. Hello, the great clown Pagliacci. I'm just going to put you as Pagliacci, okay? What are your problems? Please. Uh, I'm experimenting with they, them. All right, cool. Yeah. Tell me if you feel uncomfortable with it. But uh, for now, I got you up as they, them. All right. Thank you. Hit me with it. What are your contentions? Uh, well, I mean, I guess my inspiration to call in was the uh, the, the hypothetical about the pants man. I, I, okay. I guess I just feel the need to assert that that he was the victim of the assault in this in this instance. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree that somebody, okay. well, I mean, I would say it's a pretty minor assault. Having your pants pulled down is not the worst thing ever. I would hope we wouldn't be, like, giving children the death sentence for pulling down somebody's pants. The death sentence, absolutely not. But I, I, I don't I, think we should be I, giving I, children I would... prison time over pulling down somebody's pants. I feel <laughs> no, like no, no. I feel sorry, like that's but... the sign of an unhealthy society. Uh, uh, but, I mean, I, I think you would agree that it, it constitutes a form of sexual assault to remove somebody's clothes without their consent in public, yes? Yeah, I would say it's a form of, of sexual violation. I think that perhaps saying sexual assault is a little bit too much. Um, but, but, yeah. I mean, fair fuck. Contention. I mean, I mean, fuck. When I was, a, when we were kids, we fucking did all kinds of stupid stuff. When I was kids running around, people fucking pantsed each other all the time as a joke. And once in a while, they accidentally pulled down their underwear too. That happened like at school. It's like you're not gonna die because something like oh, that I... happens. We need to treat these things like. Surely you wouldn't want like a. I don't know. Again, we don't want to. I don't want to take it to an extreme, but it's like you wouldn't advocate for a society where like children who pants each other are like put on sexual predator list. That's absurd. No, absolutely not. But I mean, I, I have been both the victim and the perpetrator of that kind of schoolyard vi violence. Oh, shit. And... Into the prison with you. You're in a gulag for life. <laughs> well, I mean, I I certainly wouldn't advocate any kind of punishment that harsh, but I I, I would say that I, I, I wish it had been more socially discouraged. Well, I, yeah, I, I wish of there had fucking there had been, scream at them, be like, and hey, perhaps that's fucking more... really shitty. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. agree. I don't, yeah. don't fucking pants people. That's fucking a stupid thing. It's not even that funny. Right, right. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that we do that are like they're like not cool or not fun or whatever, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. Um, yeah. So, um, but like is that the thrust of the of the of the critique? Cuz I mean, I think that I think that the it's it's very illustrative. Like if you talk about like we obviously don't believe that that just the act of being made naked or being naked in public is the problem. The problem is of course that uh, there is a an act a, a, a act of coercion involved in forcibly cutting yourself in front of somebody and and revealing yourself to them in a way they don't want that invades both their personal space um, but also um, indicates a level of um, indicates a level of maliciousness and going literally going out of your way to make it so that somebody can't say no to it right and yeah. well I, I guess I would argue in that case then um, being at a pride parade, mm -hmm. being shoulder to shoulder with literally thousands of people watching sure. floats go by, and then um, a float goes by, you know, full of something that for whatever reason, because of my sensibilities, I am sure. not comfortable seeing. Yeah. And suddenly I am well, shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people that I, I can't. Uh, I, I, I can't not be well, you're there anymore. Also, you're you know? probably, let's just imagine, for the sake of, a, hypo, of a, a hypothetical, you're also shoulder to shoulder with an extremist Christian who believed from the moment that the first person stepped out in that pride parade that all of it was, was a, a violation of their worldview. It's well, I agree that that person shouldn't have come. Well, yeah, they shouldn't <laughs> have come. But also, like, what is, why is your preference so much better than theirs? And I would argue that the reason why... Well, first of all, I would argue that your preference isn't any better than theirs in that way. But I would argue That's that the fair. that the significant difference is that you probably don't believe that the existence of gay people is a blight upon the earth that that is violating their desire for a godly world. 
and instead that no. you would that your mm-hmm. contest to like saying like i don't know maybe we shouldn't have public public flashers is because of a desire to avoid harm you have different moral structures i don't think that we should build our world on the on a moral structure that says like sin existing in the world is a, is a violation but well, many I, 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 would, many I wouldn't go so, as, so wait, extreme but, so as to describe it as, as like sin i don't think there's anything inherently yeah, except wrong except, i'm not trying to make an appeal to like the uh to, to, to like like broader morality i'm, I'm simply saying that like I, I have no contention at all with kinksters, with 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 furries, with anything. Sure. But I, I I am made personally uncomfortable, just like like viscerally in my body, by seeing simulated sex acts in public. By okay. by seeing, um, I mean like 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 specifically for me like 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 grinding or like like in, like pr- provocative uh, lewd dancing, whatever. So, um, so like um. So like you you would have a really big problem with like going to a like a like like I don't know did you have a big problem going to like school dances when you were younger? Oh, absolutely. But I mean, for for other other social yeah. reasons. Yeah, okay. um, but so it wasn't because of the grinding that went on there. I mean, like like I guess partly yes, but like uh, that. that hmm. Do you think that, that maybe? Do you think that maybe hmm. the reason that you might be extra uncomfortable with this this the latter example, the one or the the former example of the the grinding is because it's it's men who you're not attracted to that are doing it well no because i'm attracted to men okay if you're attracted to men okay that's fine i mean like like here's the thing i mean like i i don't want to get too much into like my own personal shit but like i'm pansexual i'm 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 attracted to everybody regardless of of intersectionality Mm -hmm. um but like seeing the sex act out in the world just out in 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 daylight well, kind of world it's at a it's at a, a structured event that's scheduled and has parameters like pride pride parades are usually and not always but for the most part they're announced events that you can choose to go to nobody's forced to stay at a pride pride event there yeah, might be some I, you might be able to dream up some like hypothetical where like you're stuck in traffic and there is a a a you know revolutionary pride parade comes up in front of you but like come on like that's that's getting yeah, into Aaron, levels of, of ridiculousness you don't you can choose may, to go may, there. may i you take a may I take a chance to restructure because i i, I sure, kind of lost my it. my original argument because uh uh-huh. go for it I I, I I i guess i have this idea about like the the direction of communication when it comes to specific acts in public okay where <clears throat> regardless of whether or not makes it makes me uncomfortable somebody like dancing lewdly on a float Mm-hmm. the 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 language there what's being communicated is uh look at me look at how i use my body if you are aroused by this good for you okay so let me ask to you see another, somebody wait wait let wait. me ask you another example let me let me give okay. you another uh ancillary that i think that would reveal that the ish the underlying issue with this are you familiar with drive-in movie theaters yes okay a drive-in movie theater is a is a functionally public event um, and would you would you would you say that it should be frowned upon morally to play um, like tr- a, the Transformers movie, uh, like a PG rated movie at uh, or a PG thirteen maybe rated movie at um, at a at a drive in theater? No, and I'm I'm not sure are I understand you aware that there's, why. Are you aware that there's a sex scene in that movie in which uh, two college age uh, actors? Uh, em- emulate very, very realistically the act of sex in a college dorm. Okay. Okay. So and and, how, and because this is that, taking how... place out out in the open air as opposed to in a, in a closed theater, I, I should yeah. have more of a contention with this. No. I, I, yeah. you know, I, well, I suppose that, saying... is, that is a salient yeah. argument. Yeah, I'm trying to give a I'm trying to give yeah. a fair thing. This is an exhibition. Obviously, well, people like... people could see it who didn't want to go there. But realistically, you can easily leave. You can go away. The same thing goes for a pride parade. A pride parade is a public exhibit. It is a show okay, well, that people are putting on. Can, can I continue my thesis? Sure. Okay, so to, to, to put on a performance where the spectacle is look at me and be aroused is one thing. Do you think to... that's, the, do you think that's hmm? the intent and or do you think that there might be more? I don't. Th- I don't think that it, that is the deliberate intent. Ah, but I do okay. think that that as a side effect of it being a public spectacle, by my analogy, a a float out okay. in, on a parade, um, that is like a a a consequence that must be taken to, into account. Um, 
I don't think so. I don't think it needs to be coming. I don't think it needs to come into account. I don't think that it matters. I think that if you personally have have a a trigger or a um a a something that you can't tolerate, that is your responsibility in general. Reasonably, of course, like obviously. But you announce content warnings when you when you speak. Oh, of, of course, them, I yes? do. Yes, but I don't think. But I announce content warnings because I care, and also Pride lists every pride event lists what they're going to have there they list what they list list the pride thing they, they usually give out little flyers that tell you what's going to be on which floats are going to be win and the reason they do that is i mean usually because there's people who want to see those specific floats so there's that no is, difference that is true. there's no difference well, likewise i mean here's another example um you watch my stream all the time and um i'm sure Maybe not. Yes, that's that's yeah. true. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, but lots of people watch my stream all the time. I regularly go off on ab like explicit tears where I scream and rage about uh, about conservatives or other ridiculous things. I mean, I have an infamous rant where I talk about um, the you know the Doom Marine. I, maybe you've seen that clip. Me yelling about the Doom Marine. Um, I actually don't think I have, and I'm pretty oh, familiar with your stuff. Yeah, the, there's a clip of me that that's really I think it's very funny. I'm very proud of that little bit. I did this little bit where I went off on a tear about the doom about uh, the do a force feminized doom marine, um, like just absolutely raw dogging a uh, a doot doot revenant, you know, from the one with the with the horns, and I said that joke just out of nowhere, and nobody would. I mean, I would hope that most people outside of like super puritanical Christians would um, would go like, oh, okay, that's just a that's just a, a joke. You you've come to my stream, and you watch that, that's it and true. You, but I, I, again, the Demon Mama show takes place here on the internet, where you have to to click into it. You have to here, opt in. Here on the internet, where it's even there's even less uh, border. Uh, there's even less barriers to entry than there is in real life it is infinitely easier for a child to act to access anything that is shown on youtube than it is for a child to access uh a a pride parade infinitely but that, that's that's true i i i, so, I won't argue and, that for a second but it, it is so. still different it than than than, than playing your show <laughs> shouting it through a bullhorn like like alex jones from Wait, your car but, but you like, you have to explain how that's different and you haven't done well so. because it, it it's taking place literally like out in the streets i mean like like th that that is an actual like yeah, like disturbing event. The, all the... kinds of wait all kinds of things happen out in the streets all kinds of things both both scheduled and unscheduled happen out in the streets all, ki True. all kinds of things and we don't and we don't have we a, have we don't have a moral freak out about it we don't we don't we don't have a moral freak out about yeah. it, but we we well, do well, have they like, do have but I, what have i been believe to be like just about, about disturbing the peace we have gotten so far off of what i uh had but, is like a two pronged but, thing. Yeah, but, but can we on, can but, we please return? Yeah, but but who's on that? That's on you. That's your argument. Your argument brought us here. I mean, uh, Mama, please. You, you, you just kind of you just kind of gish galloped me here, and now wait, we're just like I, wait, at wait, a weird. Excuse me, excuse me. Explain to yeah. me how that was a gish gallop. Well, you just kind of kept leading me on this like weird list of hypotheticals about the Transformers, and what? then like... those were direct <laughs> comparisons. I, I get that they were direct okay, comparisons, do you, wait, do you know but what like, a, do you know what a gish gallop is? I, I'm only really becoming aware of the of, of okay. the rhetoric as it's I'm using it. So please excuse me. If, yeah. I, a, I, I, a gish gallop. I think I, I might misunderstand it as wait, just. Wait, 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 wait. Give me a second. I'll explain please. what a gish gallop is. A gish gallop is when somebody comes into a conversation and throws out an unbelievable amount of unrelated points, so many that you can't possibly, you could not possibly, um, address all of them. And they do this over and over again so that you can never actually get to the bottom of any point. When you go on a point and you follow it to its conclusions and you make comparisons, that is not a gish gallop. That is simply having a well, conversation. I, I still haven't gotten to the bottom of my original okay, point. You haven't let me finish. So I have. You, the, but, oh, come on. Don't, please, don't be like that. I, I, I mean, with, with, with absolute respect, I... I, 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 I I'm sorry. I'm. I. 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 I don't want to be like triggered or whatever. I. Okay. I am. I am absolutely on your side in 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 so many places, and I don't okay. want to be put in the position to to say like you you talk too much. I don't believe that you talk too much, but I. I have to say my piece here, please. I just told you to say it, but you instead decided oh. to go on about that. Go ahead. Excuse me, please. So there is a difference between um, performances that communicate. Um, I am performing here. If you see this and are aroused by this, good for you. And performances that uh, are 
watch me be aroused, watch me be sexually gratified by the position that I'm in, and you are subject to it, and this is an element of my kink. And I would argue that being led around on a leash, being being a sub in public, mm-hmm. is kind of uh, that. <laughs> I I strongly disagree with you. I think that you are jumping to a conclusion to justify your own bias. And and I would huh. point out to this because again, and you know, not to like not to like uh be all all anecdote Andy here, but I'm not hardly the only one. I can appeal to the entire history of fucking film. There are a fuckload of directors who build in their own weird kinks who have their own I mean, for example, um do you have And an I issue? think that's fucking oh, weird. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Give me a second here. All right. Please. Real quick. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Inglorious Bastards? Several times. I, I okay. mean, come on. Do you like Do you like that movie? I, I have my criticisms of, of Tarantino these days, okay. but yeah. I, I have to admit I've seen it over a dozen times. So, you know, that says something about it, you know. Are you aware that T- Quentin Tarantino, in the scene where, uh, spoiler alert for a movie that came out a gajillion years ago, in the scene where... Um, What's his name? The 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 mung. What's his name? The guy, the Nazi, the bad Nazi, the main Nazi, um, where um, he chokes his. Where he I chokes love that, Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know he, his name. He kills the girl. He kills the the girl that he's with the whole time. He chokes her out. Remember that scene? Yeah. Are you aware that the hands in that scene were are Quentin, Quentin Tarantino's? Quentin Tarantino's. Yeah, well, I'm hands. I'm aware of the yeah. sex crimes of Tint, of Quentin Tarantino. I'm not a not, fan. I would not call that a sex crime, but well, I would I mean, say I would say that's a little bit creepy. But at the same time. Like ninety nine point nine percent of the of people who saw that didn't notice or care, and they weren't harmed. Even though Quentin Tarantino was indeed acting out his exhibitionist kink of strangling somebody in one of his films, mm-hmm. and yet we don't care, and that's because there isn't harm. There isn't a real harm from that doing that. Maybe you don't like kinksters. Maybe you don't find it uncomfortable. Find a different pride event that's good for you. Then that's fine. We don't put these standards on anything else, even if there's ones where we can acknowledge that's a little creepy. You know what you're getting into when you watch a Quentin Tarantino movie. You, yeah, you, and you, you know what you're you, getting you, into. You know what you're getting into when you go to Pride. I prescribe that that's not something that you should have to to have to opt into. Well, then I think I, that's then, I think then, that's then weird. Response, I think that's then my response to that is I think that's alienating that's, to people. That's I think very, that like, I'm very sorry for your I'm very sorry for your feelings. That's what I would say about that. I'm sorry you feel that way, but that is what it is. It's I, a feeling. I, I do feel and that wait, way because it, because then, it, that, it, it does that, make but, me hold uncomfortable. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Like, like but personally, that position, truly, it does. But that's, it makes that's, me not want to go to Pride. It makes okay, people that I love not want to go to Pride. That's fine. <laughs> but guess what? You are no different, at least in your in your logic, you are no different than a Christian who feels that there there shouldn't be a Pride event at all. There's no difference. There is no there is no logical or a uh, difference between that. I would like, or if there is, I would love for you to elucidate how there is, but I don't think there is. I think you are you are trying to say that it's not just your feeling and not just conclude that, okay, yeah, I have a personal issue with this that I should take well, care it, of. It, it serves a public social like, like function. Yeah, and guess what? A, a Christian would disagree with you. A Christian would disagree so with you. Fucking and what? About, like, and by, oh, yeah. Well, there you go. It's just this is a feels argument. You feel. Yeah, you're right. It's a fucking feels argument. Yes. It's <laughs> like a, that's exactly. not that's not in contention it's, here. It, it, yes, it is. You're trying to argue that your feelings are somehow better, or more important than that of a Christian who thinks that the pro, that the pride parade shouldn't be happening at all because that offends them. You're offended by a specific thing, and that's fine. You're entitled to being offended, just like a Christian is entitled to be offended. And guess what? You cannot go to that specific event. You can go to one that's more appropriate for you. You can make your own. There event. isn't one, really. And I, and, and I don't have the capacity to organize one. And and you know quick people question, don't just have question, the capacity. Quick question, to... quick question. Please. When was the last time you went to Pride? Uh, it would have been 2019. Okay. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember what the date was of the Pride Parade? And uh, or are you just bluffing? No, it, it would have been like like. Uh, the 12th or 13th i don't remember the specific date in my town you bluffed listen i promise you i promise i promise you i went to pride in 2019 i don't what what the fuck is this come on i will i will also promise you i will also promise you that uh you will be you if you take a little bit of time to look you will be able to find a pride event that will be comfortable for you there you go 
And if you can't find a pride event that's comfortable for you, I'm sure you could find another equivalent. I don't think it's like a, it's like too big an ask, too weird a thing that like the biggest, like the, the, the parade that goes through main street at noon shouldn't be for like everyone that I shouldn't be welcome at that. Did we ever, there, the, 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 there are places it, at pride as has been stated a bajillion fucking times over before where, where the absolute fucking <laughs> where eyes wide shut shit goes down. And that's absolutely cool. That's really? that's that's wonderful. Eyes wide Please. shut. You, I mean, are you, like, are you like, are you like making? You're making a reference to Jeffrey Ep, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, right? That's like that was that movie was made by well, Eyes Wide Shut was a movie made by um, what's his name there? Uh, I, I I'll admit space, I don't know the full uh, like space, like historical that, context of the that, movie yeah, as was, well as you do, what's but name? like. Um, Kubrick. That I'm only Kubrick's, referencing. Yeah, that was Kubrick's. That was Kubrick's film about secret orgies in which children were raped. He was literally calling out Jeffrey Epstein. The film, the the house that was used in that film had the same number and the same address as Jeffrey Epstein's house in New York. I think that this is. I think this is. Let me let me walk not, that back no. then, please. It was not okay. my intention. I okay. I have not seen the movie in years, and I do not know the the historical okay. context before from which Stanley Kubrick back, made the before, movie. Before you walk it back. Before mm. you walk it back. And I accept you're walking it back, but I'm, I'm bringing this up for a reason. Do you recognize how your first instinct was to immediately compare Pride to a movie about pe a, a pedophile sex cult? Do you realize how prejudiced that is? Even if you didn't I, I, mean to, that is indeed what you did. I do realize that in, 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 in context. Uh -huh. However, I was just scanning my, my brain for... Um, visual representations of people works. having group sex in a big house and I landed on that movie yeah, because that is how, the most how, but that's popular works. reference point. That's, how, that's uh, how prejudice works. That is correct. You are right. <sighs> okay, gay fish. Yeah. So, um, with, with, yeah. with that, I, ha I have uh, no further contentions. Right. I'd like to say that I, I have tremendous respect uh, for all that you do. Thank you. I, still have uh contention with with your overall argument at this particular debate sure but i don't figure that uh either of us are going to going to come away uh convinced of each other's well, point here's uh, the thing i just want to say I that mean, i sorry that doesn't always happen in public debate but you can mull right. it over and think on it and see if maybe what i said makes sense and then you can decide in the future if it's oh, not I, oh i i will not i've been mulling it over for, for three days i think your position is absolutely insane and i will not be convinced of it and oh, i think you're taking oh. a huge l on this but I, I have to say that I, I do parasocially was, love you very was, much. That and was very you're great. That was a very uh, interesting turn. I would love I would love for you to be able to elucidate any of those things that you just made, but I have a feeling that you can't. Oh, I just think that like your your argument with Vosh especially was, was very um rhetorically ineffective and okay. um Really? Just just kind of just kind of triggered and very cringe. Um, on uh, both sides. I mean, like, Vosh got very fucking triggered. It was uh, not uh, a wonderful sight to behold on either end as a fan of both of yours. Sure. Um, but, uh... Okay. I, 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 mean, I just, I, mean, I, I don't know. Congratulations, you've officially stated more of your feelings, which has basically been the only thing you've done in this entire conversation. So, if, if you're, if, you know, you're uninterested in rethinking this position, or if you're uninterested in, um... In, in any of that, I mean, you failed you failed to convince me. You failed to even make an argument outside of I don't like this personally, which is the exact same thing a Christian could say about all of pride. I don't think that invalidates the argument from, from jump. I, I think it should still be a space that is made to be as inclusive to everybody well, as possible. I, so, so if I walk out, if I walk outside and I say, and I see you on the street and I, fe and I say, I feel like Pagliacci is a disgusting offensive person i should be able to basically advocate for you to be put in prison because i think that you're disgusting and offensive and violating me just because i feel that way do you see what the problem is with feels arguments i i i don't i don't fully follow if you if you're only just if the only argument that you have is your feelings people can feel anything people right, can feel of course. all kinds you... of things they can feel all kinds of ridiculous things people do feel all kinds of things but your feels aren't an argument you have to actually no, have they... an argument for why you believe the things you do otherwise you're just basically reacting based on your feelings my argument is that 
the Pride Parade, the one mm -hmm. that goes down Main Street of every major city in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, should be a place that is as is, is is deliberately designed to be as inclusive to everybody as possible. Okay, then. I that includes okay, let's pretend I'm going to agree with you. Wait, 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 in, wait, wait, wait. Uncomfortable I, I, around displays I, of sexual. <laughs> hold on a second. Uh, Guess what? Simulation in public. Let's let's pretend that I agree with you for a second. But I'm a Christian. Yeah, I agree with you. It should be as agreeable to as many people as possible. I shouldn't have to see those gay people walking through my downtown. Whoops. That's that's, that's not your, an equivalent that's your argument. Logic. Yes, that is. That is your argument. Your argument that your feelings are enough to justify us not making changes or, or not allowing something is the exact same argument as a Christian saying, I don't want those gay people, those disgusting, generate, sinful gay people walking down my street. It's the same. You're using the exact okay, then, same then, then you're examining it in a moral vacuum. You No, <laughs> you just don't like being compared to Christians. You don't like being confronted with the fact that your opinion is basically just your personal feelings about certain types of people that might be at pride. That it's just raw prejudice and there's nothing else to it. You don't actually have a reason for why you believe these things, except it, for your feelings. Just like a Christian who says, I don't feel like I should have to see gay people. It, the consent, then consent. The the, the whole well, fucking Christian, Bosch has well, reiterated it five fucking times about this was, about by the way, hold on a second, hold consent on a second. in this, public. Just so you know, this was I I as somebody who literally argued with Vosh, not even Vosh had this take. Your take is more extreme than Vosh's and worse than Vosh's. Vosh would not argue this argument. I'm sorry, but he would not. I, I, don't, I know because I debated him on it last night. Okay, because fine, what? whatever the fuck. On the same grounds, on the same grounds that you would say, I don't consent to seeing uh, the leather daddies walking around, a Christian would say, I don't consent to seeing gay, those gay people holding hands in public. Oh my God, that's disgusting. That will corrupt my okay, children. But th and there is the way, a tangible, quantifiable, communicatable difference between if you are aroused by this, then fine, and watch me be sexually stimulated in public. You can't, a... you can't show that. You don't know. You can't demonstrate. First of all, you can't demonstrate intentionality in this at all. You don't know. And we the reason why I use the examples of the films is that we recognize that films often contain sexual content for all kinds of different reasons, sometimes to titillate, sometimes to tell a story. But it's not. It's, it, it's very difficult to tell what those reasons are. And just because some people might have a bad motivation for the thing that they do that doesn't mean we should ban the thing in public or that we shouldn't uh that we should discourage the thing entirely in public you haven't you yeah. haven't established that there is any any you haven't established that 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 meaningful difference please try to argue that the puppy boy being dragged around by a leash at, 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 at pride Folsom, at is, 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 is not, doing wait, it for me, hold on any second. other reason wrong first of than all, for their stimulation first, excuse me excuse me first of all that was not at pride do not repeat fucking Nazi talking points at me on my stream. I, I'm not that referring to the picture. I'm, I'm referring to my own anecdote of what I have seen. Well, I don't believe your anecdote. You don't have to believe it. I don't. Like... <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't believe it. Okay, so that doesn't what, so make it now? less. <laughs> your, well, your argument is not is not doing very well right now. I don't believe your shitty anecdote. I think you have invented an anecdote to try and justify your feelings post hoc and that's not a tactic i very much like or do i nor do i think it's a rhetorically effective i don't think anybody's convinced by this that that i will concede i i'm still here's here's my recommendation to you because i don't think we're yeah. gonna i don't know that we're gonna go much further i, I don't think that we are yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I can tell you're very, you're very, very rooted in this position on an emotional level, and that means that it's, it's basically impossible. You can't. Uh, there's a saying, you know, I'm sure you've heard Vosh say it. You can't reason someone out of a position that they didn't reason themselves into. You didn't. You, you came into here with a, with a position that of, that was based entirely on feelings. You don't actually have a reason for why you believe those things. However, that can be changed. You can leave this conversation afterwards. You can chill and mull over it, and you can think about what reasons there are, and you might even be able to change your position because you might realize that your reasoning was flawed. That's a cool thing about humans. We can adjust our positions. 
I will concede that I have not been rhetorically efficacious in arguing my position, but I, I will not concede my position. I'm sorry. I mean, um, I'm not asking you I, to concede I, I, your position. All I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that perhaps you can recognize that there are flaws, and maybe you won't. Maybe you'll go off this call and you'll come up with the silver bullet argument that I haven't thought of and I have never heard, and you will blow my argument to shreds next time you come on. Which I would. I really hope do. I do, and I, and I really hope oh, I, I do get another chance to come on because yeah, I, I really. Absolutely, no, gladly. If you think that you come up with the, if you find, if you think you found the golden, the golden, the golden key that un, that that destroys my argument that I've painstakingly laid out over the last four hours, um, I would, uh, I would, I would love to hear it, but I don't think you will. But good All right. Luck. I mean, but good luck anyway. I don't think I'm going to come up with with a. Uh rhetorically effective means of, of doing that in the, in the next uh well, i don't need you to be rhetorically effective, effective window of time i, I don't but... need you to be i don't necessarily need you to be rhetorically effective i mean i think that's an an i think that we could analyze that in, in individually but i don't really i usually don't do spend much time talking about the rhetoric of people who call in because i know you're not like a like a you're not doing a presentation you're coming to argue but you didn't you not only you, this wasn't a rhetorical failure this was an, a failure of lack of arguments you didn't have the arguments you just don't like it you haven't figured it out why you don't like it no i i have and no, you haven't I... <laughs> we just displayed that this entire conversation just displayed that i, I okay i mean it, it, it... i didn't hear a single actual contention you seated on the things that i brought up so yeah i, I, st I still hold contention with with the argument that um, my not consenting to, to watching somebody being choked in public to their sexual gratification is equivalent to uh, a, a Christian moralist um, arguing that gays should not be allowed to hold hands in public. Well, Those are absolutely... The, I, but in their while, mind, while they are superficially they're, similar, you're they're analyzing them in a moral they're vacuum. Not even, they're not superficially um, similar. They're the opposite of superficially similar. They're, they are contextually similar because a, a the gay people holding hands together is displaying that they are in, you know, the implication of gay men holding hands together is that they are romantic and probably sexual partners. Right. It is, it is you, it's, it's you who decides how far and what is being, what, what, is, what is being <laughs> communicated by somebody being dragged around by a collar is I am being choked and I have I an mean, erection I mean, right I now. Mean, first of all, first of all, that doesn't happen at pride. Um, so that's, Folsom that you're referencing, I, I, which is a specifically adults only BDSM event. But I, I, I'm, I'm it, afraid I, I can't I can't analyze it or I can't explain it better than an anecdote. But sure. I have seen it. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, damn. Well, that sucks for that person, I guess. It, it sucks for me because I saw oh, it. You know, so I'm so I'm so sorry. Um, please just whatever you do, never, ever go to a movie rental store because you will see way worse all over the place in a movie rental store. Sorry. I, you would not believe I'm... the things I have seen. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I wouldn't. The, the things I've seen behind closed doors that I oh, opt shit. into. Wait, wait, so now so now we're talking about behind closed doors? I mean, like, I'm as, I'm as much a, a, a film fucking nerd as you are. I may, may not have a blind spot around uh, Kubrick, but uh, I've... Sorry, I'm getting off track. You're I uh, off took track. a couple of bong right. rips before I came on. I'm three I, sheets I to the know, wind. I'm very I sorry I wasted your time. You didn't waste my time. Hey, relax. It's all good. You didn't waste my time. We had an interesting conversation. I don't think you have a very good argument for this, but that's okay. No one has the great, the, the, the perfect argument at the beginning, okay? Think about it a little more. And if you come up with some arguments against me, let's talk again in the future, okay? Please, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Sure thing. All right. You have a wonderful day, Pagliacci. Likewise. Oh, I just want to say, it's Pagliacci. But Pagliacci. That's n whatever. Sorry. Fair enough. Good night. Goodbye. All right. Let's bring the next person in. That was interesting.